Dr. Romano's here to go over solubility. Dr. Romano, I like the monster on your shirt. Forget the monster on my shirt. Why don't we look at the monster question on the blackboard on solubility, young lady. The first thing I want to do here is to look at a very, very important question for the debt. This will encompass three possible questions, maybe even four. So this quick clip will really drive home a point for you. I say to you, find the chloride ion concentration that must be exceeded before silver chloride can precipitate. I gave you the KSP of silver chloride, and I give you the silver ion concentration. So what we got to do is we have this solution, and we're going to be adding chloride ions. And we want to see how much chloride is needed to cause us to see a precipitate. First thing you do is we write the reaction for silver chloride. Silver chloride solid breaks down into silver plus chloride. Even though silver chloride is insoluble, nevertheless, a little bit of it still would break up. Once we wrote the reaction, I wrote the KSP. Now, put the values in. We know the value of the KSP. We know the value of the silver. And that will give me the chloride ion concentration to form a saturated solution. Anything beyond this value would cause precipitation. So the amount needed to go beyond, you got to go beyond 5 to the minus 8 molar of chloride ion. A sure bad question for the dad and quick and dirty. Part B of this question, I say to you, if potassium chloride was added, the KSP will blank. First of all, the KSP is an equilibrium constant, and therefore equilibrium constants don't change unless you change temperature. So the KSP will remain the same, and the molar solubility of silver chloride will blank. Well, the chloride ion represents the common ion. If I put a common ion in here, the equilibrium shifts to the left. And if it shifts to the left, it's going to make more of the solid. So therefore, the solubility of it will decrease. One final note, whenever you see a transition element, um, for instance, like silver, or you have zinc, or you have cobalt or nickel, always remember it's going to be more soluble in ammonia because ammonia will form a complex ion. And complex ion is very favorable as far as forming. In this example, if we had this in ammonia, the ammonia would remove the silver and would form this silver complex ion. We would call this diamine in in organic chemistry, we call the ammonia group the amine group. So it would be called diamine silver one ion. Okay, at any rate, so remember, in ammonia, we have very high solubility for these complex ions. All right, I hope that gives you a great understanding of a question or concept that I think that you're going to really need for that data exam. I have a lot of good questions like this in the destroyer, so um, get cracking. Good day to you.